Konju. Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone. Hello and greetings from Slovenia. Good morning everyone. We come from Cyprus, the mythological birthplace of Aphrodite. Good morning everyone or bonjour. Pozdrav iz Sedme gimnazije. Good morning everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with my entire class and our teachers. Hello everyone. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Dear fellow Europeans, as everybody else, I would like to introduce the rest of my group. But first of all, I would like to congratulate my classmate Hannes, who celebrates his 18th birthday today. Happy birthday. Aristotle had pointed out that the real sense of bliss derives from participating in something greater than yourself. We are proud to say that we are European and we are proud to be part of this great project. It's definitely going to be a very exciting and amazing day for all of us and we will live with a lot of positive emotions. Thank you and have a nice day. You may say I'm a dreamer but I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us And we can all have chocolate beef fries and waffles Thank you <laughs> My name is Rainer Wieland. I'm Rainer Wieland. I'm an MEP from Germany. I come from Stuttgart, 150 kilometers away. I've been a member of this house for 20 years now, so I've been here for a while, you could say. And I'm one of 14 vice presidents of the European Parliament. I'm always delighted to take part in Euroscholar. I think it's great that you do have teachers who prepare you for this and have actually applied to be part of Euroscholar. We know that in the Eurozone uh, the same uh, currency policy is adopted, is adopted by all states. So in the context, in the context of, of uh, Eurozone, do you believe that the adoption of the same fiscal policy by all states would be uh, a good uh, solution to this problem? It did promote the, uh, the, Euro, the Euro and uh, what is going to happen uh, the next years for the, Euro, the Eurozone. You talked about crises and I would like to say explicitly that the crises we have seen and we currently see are crises of national states. When we introduced the Euro, we tried to have quite a tight framework. Um, uh, there was a yardstick of 60% debt of GDP and 3% um, uh, new um, uh, debt per year. This was the stability pact, which not all member states kept to, which led to things going wrong on the uh, there was the banking crisis, that was a crisis of um, national states. We've uh, tried to bring in serious European banking legislation. So we ha are involved in it, putting this on the European footing. And um, the migration crisis, that's a national crisis rather than a European crisis. But what we're trying to do is helping individual countries. I didn't quite get which member state you came from, but let me tell you that in the election campaign of 2014, things were far from easy. Um, 
some people were saying, well, if people are spending too much, the Greeks are spending too much, they um, have fiddled the books to some extent, um, should we throw them out? And, and I could only keep my voters on board by saying it's my conviction that if we have a solid basis for solidarity, then I can um, raise my hand for this. And you talked about um, uh, European fiscal policy. Um, I mean, it's, it may be a question of some people giving others money, which um, they then spend on luxuries. If we um, uh, do that, things are really going awry, and I can't keep my um, uh, voters on board. I mean, my mother, for example, has a very small pension. I have to tell my mother why Germany is paying money into a European pot. So if we talk about a European fiscal policy, as far as Germany is concerned, at, at least, we cannot talk about a transfer union. Countries which make an effort, which don't spend money unnecessarily, and are free of corruption insofar as possible, can be helped if um, European policy requires things of them which are expensive and they can't afford. In my country and in Baden-Württemberg, the um, land I come from, there are um, a richer communities and less rich communities. And the land can um, help um, provide um, money to the others, and that's um, fine. If I talk about European fiscal policy, I also need to talk about how European money is actually going to be spent in countries. If it's just a maneuver of um, send us money, we'll sort things out. That maneuver um, is not a guarantee of success for Europe. That's my view, at least. After Brexit, in future, do you think that uh, Scotland would be accepted as an EU member state if Scotland became independent? If you look at it uh, legally speaking, the, when the UK leaves uh, the EU and uh, after that Scotland were to become an independent country, then Scotland would have to apply for membership. Now, I would look at it uh, well, I suppose, favorably, but that doesn't mean it to its membership would be accepted. We'd have to look uh, at uh, the, c the candidate, uh, Scotland, and see whether Scotland uh, um, meets uh, the uh, di different uh, requirements required for membership. So there would have to be discussions, debates. There would have to be uh, uh, an accession process, and it might go more quickly than with other candidates, but there would still have to be an accession process. And other countries would be interested in what's going on as well, because if Scotland were to become independent, then actually that would only be able to happen if there were a second referendum. Are countries such as Macedonia and Albania in their current states uh, close to becoming member, or do they still need to change in certain aspects to gain access to the EU and become a member state? Also. Right. Accession issues are extremely complicated. And as I mentioned earlier, as far as I'm concerned, they're not a matter of being a beauty context. Test. The Aki communitaire taking on the um, body of European law 
has to be, that all has to be complied with. We opened the House of European History recently in Brussels. Do visit if you're in Brussels. On the third floor, there's an exhibition which um, really impressed me as a lawyer. It's a six meter thick book and it's open and it contains the Aki Communitaire. Everything which is law in the European Union. And all this has to be complied with an accession country. It contains things like when you can use the CE marking, um, the um, a warning on cigarette packets, how big the font needs to be. And all this has to be complied with by an accession country. And then there are more major problems. A couple of years ago, when the crisis began, the Icelanders considered whether, whether they wanted to join. They came to Brussels and said, um, well, fishing quotas are very important for us, and we'd have to make major, we'd, um, need you to make major compromises. And the EU said, well, no, sorry. And Snus from Sweden, for example, um, it was important for Sweden to have um, snus. Um, it's banned throughout the rest of Europe. It can be sold in Sweden. If you go to Sweden, you can buy snus. I mean, you can take small quantities to the rest of Europe. There are a few exceptions, but basically, you have to comply with the Aki Communautaire to join the EU. There are real problems. If the countries of former U Yugoslavia make an effort, we can offer them a prospect of joining. Former Yugoslavia belongs to our continent. And the shame of looking away is um, something that's something we did 25 years ago. We looked away when there was a war. We should not allow ourselves to do this again. We need to offer them a perspective. This is what I tell my voters, my constituents. But it's a question of solidarity on the one hand and solidity on the other. That's my consideration. Then we also talked about electric cars because these cars could be perfect firm or company cars. Uh, the government should give tax allowance for those who buy e-cars and uh, maybe the public uh, transport vehicles should also be made uh, environmentally friendly because every people use public transport every single day and we should never forget that every little change matters today. A global cooperation would definitely be needed. Media should be used. Uh, politicians and celebrities are role models, so it is their moral duty to influence people and help fully gauge the consequences again. Reusable packings should be used in shops. Nylon bags should be banned. Companies having uh, uh, companies harming the natural habitat of endangered species uh, should be punished. Uh, we also talked about that maybe in bigger workplaces we should uh, build shower stalls so maybe more people would use bicycles or uh, maybe uh, go by walk to work. Well, we should, uh, we should establish less uh, radical conservationist groups so that the children could also take part in these kind of uh, groups because uh, um, themes like Greenpeace uh, is usually made for adults and not children but if uh, children can uh, take part it at an earlier age, uh, they will be a conservationist when they grow up. And uh, in the 21st century, we need uh, every people to be a conservationist because the other way we won't be able to live in this planet for a long time. I think uh, it was everything we have talked about. Thank you for your attention. So now I would like to firstly talk to you about uh, gender equality, which is uh, we, about which we had two points in our group. Firstly, we talk about, talked about uh, equal wages. Uh, 
you know, it is universally agreed upon that men and women should be equal and should be as, sh as such paid equally. But the reality is that men and women don't, uh, don't receive the same wages. Uh, so what we propose uh, is that companies who do not pay men and women equally should be punished by fines from, uh, from international organizations or from uh, national governments, such as uh, from international governments. So uh, on the, the similar, similar topic, our second point is the point about free distribution of sanitary products and contraceptive, contraceptives to uh, women uh, with low income. We believe that these products uh, are uh, are necessary for for the functioning of every woman on this planet, but uh, but there are uh, uh, sadly a lot of women who don't have the access to these products or have to uh, have to spend a lot of money on them because they are taxed ve very highly, uh, uh, and and as such they are basically restricted in a in, in a way that they don't have the same uh, same um, ability to choose for uh, to choose on their uh, on on their uh, uh, rights of rep reproduction as uh, such things. So we believe that because of that, we should uh, every woman and every person on, on this planet should be uh, allowed to have the, the same reprodu reproduction uh, rights. And uh, because of that, we believe that sanitary products and contraceptives should be distributed freely among uh, w women with low income. Es zeigte sich, dass es mehrere Ansatzpunkte für dieses Thema gibt, unter anderem das erst, den ersten Ansatzpunkt. First of all, it's uh, very important that uh, we don't just uh, send money to the development countries, but that uh, there be experts and human resources are there as well. We need to uh, provide uh, uh, scientists uh, and uh, development experts uh, so that uh, with uh, funding from the EU, the countries can be helped to, to become independent, to stand on their own two feet. So we discussed it and we thought there was a need for more cooperation, more co partnership between uh, schools, uh, uh, between uh, uh, country, uh, cities as well. Uh, it shouldn't just be a case of uh, knowledge and uh, science uh, that mustn't get uh, lost either. Uh, there should be partnerships uh, and uh, that this can help uh, in the cultural sphere as well. We looked at micro-investment as well, help for startups in uh, the countries. We felt that there could be improvements here. It's very important to know exactly where the money ends up. We needed. We need to think very carefully uh, about which countries should receive help. Uh, there is a need for human resources, yes, but we need to carry out checks to make sure that money goes where it's supposed to go and ends up in the right place. And then there's the, we discussed non-governmental organizations. Uh, they are keen to get involved, and we felt it was important for them to do so. <clears throat> we felt that uh, they had an important uh, role to, uh, to play and therefore it should be stepped up. Thank you very much. Our next task was about uh, knowing more about the EU and uh, the benefits to avoid uh, the Brexit, for example. And um, there were two... Um, opinions. Um, first was that we should um, make new subjects about uh, this to, to know more about uh, the EU and the other was uh, to integrate the other subject uh, into other subjects and uh, the majority voted for the second one. Then we moved on to dig digitalization uh, because jobs uh, require this, uh, I mean the IT knowledge and uh, we think it would be uh, really good to, to learn more about IT devices and um, things like that. And of course, the majority voted uh, for it again. Um, then we moved on to a recently signed agreement, which was signed on, uh, signed on Monday about the military cooperation, where um, a budget of uh, 5.8 billion dollars which uh, will 
be announced after 220 uh, annually, with which uh, there would be five military bases in different places, um, and it would uh, help uh, the EU to increase the influence uh, internationally. The EU should help the conflict zones. They should work with the countries in conflict to improve the situation and also fund the formation of camps in those actual countries where people in need can seek asylum immediately and right away. Fourth, um, in the integration aspect of things, um, we suggested that there should be a policy that should be enforced in all EU member states that states that every member state has to welcome a minimum number of refugees based on the population of the country, the area of the country, and the economic standing of the country, based on things like the GDP of the country or the development index of the country. And more funding will be given to the countries which take in uh, more refugees based on the um, aforementioned three criteria. Now, um, we also agreed that migrants should be taken to cities and not rural areas, because um, in cities, they're more likely to be integrated into society. Now, it is very important that all migrants are taught the language of the country. Um, for young people, this could happen in schools. Um, also, very, very important, and we all agreed, that, it's very, that migrants have to socialize with local people. Um, for example, in Finland and in Sweden, activities like night football have been put into practice. In, in activities like these, people can have fun, and, just, and this will lead to the formation of a friendly bond. Now, uh, the new generation, so the, the youngsters who are younger than us, they should be taught in schools, especially about how not to be racist, not to discriminate against people, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when you're young, like five or six years old, that's when your opinions can be shaped, okay? It's much more difficult for an 18-year-old's opinions to be altered, especially in a classroom. The first idea we discussed was a unity of education systems within the EU. So we know each country has their own schooling system, but uh, what we wanted to achieve was uh, a result in one country that has value in another country. Um, for example, achieving five A's in your higher exams in Scotland carries huge value and almost guarantees a top job and a highly ranked university entry. But if you were to take these results and try and get a job in this field in Spain, for example, your results would have no value and you'd have to sit a Spanish equivalent to obtain a job of the same level. Uh, we thought this was unfair and reduces the flow of students traveling to different countries and uh, stops them obtaining well-suited jobs in other countries. Um, if, results had e if results had equal um, or even just a closer value in each country or um, if countries would recognize the value of qualifications from any EU country, and um, there would be a lot more students in work and they would be experiencing different cultures whilst doing so. Um, our second idea was to create a European, a U, a European portal website um, which would offer a, a list of available jobs in European countries to all students in EU countries. Um, so this would cater specifically to the skills of the students. Um, they could enter their skills and qualifications and like a list of jobs would appear which would be well suited to them from uh, surrounding EU countries. Uh, this would encourage young people to explore different paths and jobs in different countries and would highlight to them what's out there if the job that they desire is not readily available in their own country. Um, so our third idea was to have increased opportunities and support for disadvantaged or disabled students. Uh, they faced um, their most vulnerable in um, these positions and they face difficulty finding a job. Um, so we think that creating support groups and skills workshops for disadvantaged students, um, which would give them the skills uh, to feel confident and able to pursue jobs that they otherwise wouldn't have felt able to do. Um, this also boosts the number of young people who are able and have the skills to work. Um, as these people are most vulnerable, um, giving them support, which is specific to finding a job, would help them immensely. Um, we think that the EU could offer these programmes and give more support to those who are disadvantaged. That's all. Thank you.